If you are in the need for great repair, what are those next steps? The Old Pre-Meds Podcast, session number 276. And welcome to the Old Pre-Meds Podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, your host here every week where I get to take your questions directly from the non-traditional pre-med discussion over at premedforums.com and answer them here for you. If you have a question, go set up a free account and ask your question again in the non-traditional pre-med discussion. It's wrapping up the end of May, and we've been talking about MCAT registration here in the MCAT Minute, and I want to put in one final plug for registering for the exam as soon as you need to. Again, the MCAT Minute sponsored by Blueprint MCAT. Go check them out, blueprintmcat.com. The question I get all the time is, when's the latest that I can take the MCAT? Because students are trying to figure out when can I register? Can I push it back? May typically is a time frame where July, August, and September test dates are open. Can you really take a September MCAT and still get into medical school, this application cycle? You can. Is it ideal? Absolutely not. Because a September MCAT, you get your score in October. And a lot of medical schools have deadlines in and around October, at least for the primary application, which is what your MCAT score is attached to. And schools, because many schools, most schools, have a rolling admissions basis of their application process, are constantly filling up their interview spots every single day. So the longer that it takes for your primary application to be complete, which includes having your MCAT score, the lower your chances are of getting one of those interview spots. The absolute latest, and when I say absolute, it's my recommendation, right? Again, you can take a September MCAT and still get in. There's still that chance, as Jim Carrey says in Dumb and Dumber, right? Or something to the fact of. So you're saying there's a chance, right? My absolute latest is is right around mid-July is where I start to get a little uncomfortable with students taking that late of an exam. And typically what happens is, is everything gets in the way of the MCAT and the MCAT gets in the way of everything else. And so it's just a distraction at that point. So if you can take it earlier, great. If you need to wait because that's when you're going to be ready, that's fine. Just understand there are a lot of other moving pieces to this application process that you need to be on top of as well. Go check out Blueprint MCAT for some other amazing resources. Again, that's blueprintmcat.com. So I want to talk about what is a very common dilemma for non-traditional students, and that's trying to overcome early academic woes. And that is what happened to our student today who says, I graduated several years ago with a degree in environmental sciences with a 2.39 GPA. The cumulative and science GPA were very similar as I had taken mostly science classes. After graduating, I looked into SMPs, but most of them seemed to either require the MCAT, which I wasn't prepared for, or require a minimum 3.0 GPA, which I was nowhere near achieving. Pause for a second. Random side tangent, right? This is very similar to like when you try to get a job, but you need experience to get the job, but you can't get experience for the job because the jobs require experience, right? It's just like you you can't get into an SMP because your grades aren't good enough, but you need the SMP to improve your grades because your grades weren't good enough to begin with, but you can't get into this. Like it's just this really just endless cycle of craziness. But anyway. I instead began a do-it-yourself postback and have completed 50 credits with a significant upward trend. My postback GPA is 3.7. My overall cumulative and science are now 2.83. I'd have to take an additional 30 credits getting all A's in order to achieve a 3.0 cumulative and science GPA. I recently became degree seeking in my postback as a biology major and actually only need six more credits to earn a second degree. I was recently told by an advisor that I'm likely beating a dead horse and don't need to continue my undergraduate studies until I get the 3.0 and that I should get a graduate degree or SMP under my belt instead. I was shocked because I'd previously heard that I needed 
at minimum to meet the 3.0 mark with my cumulative undergraduate degree. So I began cold calling many medical schools and found only a handful admitted to automatically screening out students with a GPA lower than 3.0. I'm not sure, however, if there still might be an unspoken rule where sub three isn't really considered. Assuming that I don't need to reach a 3.0, my next question is, do I really need to, after these 50 hours, then go on to complete an SMP in order to show that I can handle graduate level coursework? Not only will an SMP be doubly expensive, it's stopping me from ameliorating my application in other ways. In order to support myself financially and be able to attend school simultaneously, I'm not able to look for research experience since that's typically during the same time as classes are held. I'm also very strapped for time working 50 plus hours a week, taking full-time classes, and I'm not really able to volunteer shadow uh, during this time period. Additionally, I'm not really sure how I would fund an SMP since they're typically grueling like the first year of med school and likely would have to quit working or cut down significantly. Any advice is appreciated. Super common questions and dilemmas and, and just situations that non-traditional students find themselves in. If you are in the need for grade repair, what are those next steps? And SMP programs are very much like, hey, you have to have a minimum GPA to do our SMP program. I'm like, well, isn't that the point of an SMP program to improve my GPA? Now, obviously, they have some sort of minimums to for you to, to get in. They assume that if you're below a 3.0 in this situation, then you're likely not going to do well in the SMP, which is a terrible assumption because there are lots of reasons why students don't do well to begin with. And then you either find your passion or you find what works for you, whatever that may be, and then you do well. So I, I, I hate SMPs that have these minimums, that have these cutoffs. Hey, we want a, an MCAT. Don't apply to an SMP program that requires an MCAT. In my mind, it completely just, it, it defeats the whole purpose of why you're applying to an SMP. So you can improve your study habits, improve your understanding of the basic sciences so that you can do well on the MCAT as well as improve your GPA. I don't understand programs that require an MCAT for the SMP. That's a completely different tangent. At the end of the day, the question is, what do you have to do? Now, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, there is no right answer. A lot of times we talk about this 3.0 kind of rule of thumb. If you can get that 3.0 rule of thumb, then there's a higher likelihood potentially that schools aren't going to screen you out. Do we know every school that screens out below a 3.0, below a 2.9, below a 2.7? No, right? It's just this theoretical number that advisors throw out there to just say, hey, on the safer side, try to get above a 3.0. Now, this student's done the math right? It's 30 more credit hours. Is that worth it? Probably not, considering that they already have 50 credit hours at a 3.7. At some point, you have to understand that medical schools don't just look at or don't only look at your final GPA numbers. And for non-traditional students who are trying to do a lot of grade repair, your final numbers aren't going to be sexy. They're not going to look good. And this student's doesn't look good, right? 283 doesn't look good. If you were to go post that on Reddit right now and say, hey, I have a 2.83, what are my chances? You would get laughed out of the room. No, the subreddit. <laughs> you would get laughed out of there. But if you said, hey, I have a 2.3, I'm doing a ton of grade repair, my last 50 hours are a 3.7, blah, 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 and it turns into a completely different discussion. And so when you're looking at your situation, the question is, do you, do you need an SMP? No. Do you need a master's program, like a, a, a sciences master's program outside of an SMP? No. Will there be schools that are going to reject you because of your cumulative and science GPA number? Yes. Will there be schools that will have the opportunity and as part of their process, they have the opportunity to go, you know what? I don't care about that final number. Show me the last 20 credit hours. Show me the last 40 credit hours. Show me the last 60 credit hours. There are plenty of schools that do that. And those are the schools 
ideally, that you apply to. Now, the frustrating thing is schools aren't completely transparent about this kind of stuff. I had a new medical school on the pre-mid years podcast recently, the, the director of admissions there at Norda College of Osteopathic Medicine, and I asked straight up, like, how do you look at GPA? And she said, we look at the last 60 credit hours, undergraduate or graduate or combined, whatever, at the last 60 hours. I've talked to University of Central Florida previously. This was a few years ago, so don't quote me because they're their process may have changed, but they said, hey, we look at the last 20 credit hours of science. If if that's solid, then then we we are okay with whatever you got, right? Obviously, there's an upward trend. We're good with that. If you Google 32-hour rule, some medical schools out there have a 32-hour rule. So at the end of the day, the, the question is, have you done enough in your mind to prove academic capability? You could go ask 100 medical schools and potentially get 50 different answers, right? 50 of them will say you've done enough. 50 of them will say do more. And you'll have to decide when to stop. I agree an SMP, a master's program at this point, it's expensive. It's a lot of time. And what more is there to prove? 50 credit hours at a 3.7 is solid. And yes, unfortunately, you got some baggage that's holding you down from your prior undergraduate degree. And that's just, it, that, that is what it is. There's nothing you can do about that now. So you have to decide. I can't decide for you. Nobody else can decide for you because the answers are going to be different. You have to decide. Have I done enough in my mind to prove that I'm academically capable? Again, because medical schools are going to give you different answers. And have you done enough to do well on the MCAT? If, if you think the answer is yes, then you're done. Right? Maybe finish out that second degree, take those six more credits, get as close to 60 credits as possible, and say, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> I'm going to go focus on the MCAT. I'm going to focus on my activities so that I know what I'm getting myself into. I can talk about why I want to be a doctor in my personal statement and my interviews and everywhere else. You're done. Or in your gut, are you going to regret not doing the extra 30 credit hours to get to a 3.0 or doing an S&P or whatever that may be? If it were me, I would be done. I'd finish up those six more credits, earn the second degree, even though it's not super important, but it's just, it's six more credits. It's already kind of planned out. I would take them and focus on everything else. It's a very hard dilemma for non-traditional students who are stuck in this kind of purgatory of GPA where you have dug yourself such a big hole in your early undergraduate work that your final numbers just don't look good, no matter what you do. And you have to bet on the fact that medical schools out there understand that there are students like you who are going to be amazing physicians because you have shown resilience and you've shown determination that this is what you want. And yes, you've shown academic capability. I, I, I get I get trashed all the time for this by telling students who have a 2.83 GPA that you can get into medical school because it's com taken completely out of context of all of the hard work that has gone in to get to that 2.83 from a 2.39. That upward trend means a ton. And there are schools out there that look at that. Trust yourself, trust the process and apply broadly enough and, and have conversations with schools if, if you have the time. Some schools will say, we look at patient, or students holistically and they won't really give you any inside information. Some schools will help you out and, and give you some specific feedback based on your specific situation. Advocate for yourself. You've done a ton of hard work already. Keep it up and good luck. I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to check out Blueprint MCAT at blueprintmcat.com. Sign up for that free account and get access to tons of amazing goodies, including new flashcards. Go check them out, blueprintmcat.com. Hope you have a great week. We'll see you next time here on the Old Pre-Meds Podcast.